Hey guys, it's Drew with uh, episode 445. This is going to be my last weekly comic spotlight, but before we get into that, I wanted to let you guys know that we have had overwhelming success with uh, the launch of the Comics for Fun and Profit spec pick bundle of Amazing Spider-Man number 800, 1 in 25 Del Auto variant with a regular cover A, for 70 bucks through our friends at Kawabunga Comics. It's been a, a lot of great feedback on it. Um, sold quite a few um, to our for, to our listeners, and we really appreciate all the, the support that you're giving us and the fact that you're cleaning up on this deal. Again, it's, it's 70 bucks. You get the AS, ASM 800, 1 in 25 Del Auto, and a regular cover A for $70. Uh, I just checked ECBS site. They are selling it for one twenty five, I and mean, people are selling it all day long on eBay right now for one twenty one hundred and thirty dollars. So quite quite the deal. If you are so inclined, you can also go for the remastered variant, which at two for two thousand dollars on DCBS, or you can get it from our good friends at Cowabunga for seven hundred, I believe, and I think they're going to go with. They're doing the black and white on DCBS for four thousand, but you can get that through Cowabunga for twelve hundred. If you are so inclined and are a heavy, a heavy hitter when it comes to Spider-Man variants, I, I can. It's pretty obvious which way you should go. Again, if any of those sound interesting to to you, the seventy dollar Del Auto, which is beautiful, along with a cover A for seventy bucks, give them a call two six two five six nine 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 or email orders at com, or just check out their website, com, And uh, we appreciate the support that you guys have uh, have been showing them. That's very, that's very nice. Um, so anyway, this is now uh, my final weekly comic spotlight. I won't bother you with these anymore. So if you don't like reviews, review shows, you won't have to hear them on our feed from now on. But this is the last one, my 250th weekly comic spotlight with my co-host John Mayo over at the comic book page website. You can check out more of those if you want. With the new co-host, I'm looking forward to hearing what he has to say. I wanted to thank everybody for listening and all the kind words. So I appreciate all of that. And now let's uh let's let's play that last one. Now starting us off in DC is Batman Sins of the Father. This is a nudge, another digital first series based on a video game. And I think DC's got a pretty good track record with these. We've we've read one or two. I think uh, Injustice Gods Among Us is is probably the best of the bunch. Yeah, that's the that's kind of the standout. But yeah, there've been some good ones. Yeah, this is one where you know I I had some issues with this uh, this story because I'm coming at it as a, a not a player of the game, as a reader of the Batman uh, comics. This is in a different narrative universe, so status quo is a little different. Uh, and some of that was, was throwing me in, in, in not, I, I felt like I came in almost in the middle of this story on the first issue. And like when we first see Alfred, I'm like, wait, that's Alfred? Yeah. That doesn't look like Alfred. Who? I mean, it, and I haven't played the game, so I don't know what it's based on. It's like, well, are they going for like a Michael Caine look? Cause they sure didn't get it if that's what they were going for. There were those sorts of things that were getting a little bit between me and the story. And it's not a bad story. But I've kind of read the whole story around Thomas Wayne's Not the Man Bruce Thought He Was a couple of times. Matter of fact, I think we've gotten that with uh, around the Court of Owls time frame. So even in the last couple of years, as a fairly big thing, you know, as to, to whether Thomas really was this paragon of virtue Bruce may have thought he was or not. And this was not a bad take on that concept, but it was not a new concept to me. And then this whole having Wayne Enterprises at risk of going under because of what has been revealed about Thomas Wayne's activities or whatnot many years ago felt a little forced, a little contrived, and really a little hard to swallow. Um, and the fact that, again, we weren't coming in at the beginning of the story, even though it's a first issue of a miniseries, and that this is taking place between the, the first and second quote-unquote seasons of the game from uh, Telltale, I mean, I guess that makes sense. I don't think it was a good choice, but I'll be honest. I, I heard it was based on a video game. I'm more of an old school video gamer than a, a current day video gamer. So I'm like, when did video games start having these seasons or whatever? Um, 
have you played the game at all? Do you have any more? Familiarity? I have the I have the first one. I have um, the first Batman um, that, but not this this one. Um, and I and I'm only about halfway through it, so it might end and be like right before this this series started. I don't know. Um, but you know, I tend to zone out during cutscenes anyway. And just, you know, kind of solve the little puzzles. I like I like the Telltale series. They're kind of fun. Okay. Um, and they're not they're they're not a button mashing type of thing. It's just uh adventure and decision making and and stuff like that. So I kinda like the series, but I have not played the new one and I haven't finished the old one. So I'm probably in the same place you are. I was I was in, coming into this new interpretation of exactly uh, where we are and what kind of world we're in and yeah there was a lot of things that were thrown i'm like oh oh that's different well that's that's significantly different okay mm-hmm. and 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 i i kind of did the same thing you did with uh the board of directors and it felt kind of uh oliver queen-esque from the the green arrow series when the that they always seem to be taking his corporation away from him and and the best interest of the company and i i just thought that was kind of a little a little we've been down that road so i don't, I don't it, it didn't seem legitimate well i mean yeah if you want to do that with green arrow that's fine cuz he's green arrow this is batman batman strikes me as you know both being a little bit more on top of things business wise and also having hired people like lucius fox and whatnot that are a lot more on top of it so i don't know um this this wasn't bad no I mean, the art was good the story was fine but mm-hmm. do we need <laughs> another else world-ish batman series right now and is the marketplace a little crowded and is it diluting the brand a bit by just continuing continuing to churn out these variations on this on and of course your number one seller i get that but but there just seems to be so many Batman going in so many different directions right now. Uh, I, I would be a confused new comic reader coming in trying to trying to maneuver through the marketplace. I definitely think that's a concern. I think the other question is: Will this comic attract people that have played the video game that are not regular readers of Batman into comics? And is this something that's going to get them from the video game to the digital comic to either other digital comics or print comics or, or not? And I, I don't know. I, I mean, I'm not in that demographic. I mean, that's great. I hope so. I, I, I mean, I'm sure that's the plan. And, uh, you know, we, we, love, we love comics and we want them to be successful. And any kind of on-roads that get new eyeballs on them is, is a great thing. Um. Yeah, so maybe it, that is the angle, but it's just it's kind of tone deaf to the amount of material that is happening simultaneously right now in DC around Batman. It just seems like there's too much going in too many different directions, and it's tough for uh, a reader to to get through all this and and keep their sanity. Well, I think the fact that this is based on the narrative in the video game. And that started in August 2016 from the research I did. And the second season has not yet completed, although it's only got its fifth episode left to come out. So with this taking place in the middle, that's based on a story that they, in the video game, started uh, a year and a half ago about. And therefore it had to be in development for a while. So I certainly wouldn't expect it to be in lockstep with, like, Dark Knight Metal or... uh, you know, some of the other current going ons in the the comics, but it's also not feeling iconic and timeless in that respect either. And I think it's a missed opportunity because if it does take people from the game through this into the comics, I think there's a smoother on ramp they could have had. Yeah. Yeah. I can see that. Um, yeah. The, the, Cause the art is a little uh, below what we're used to uh, for DC's number one character. It's not, it's not, horrible but it, it's it's not as good as what we're used to and the story is um is okay and i i didn't i didn't have a problem with it i thought it was kind of interesting um what the problem is i don't think i'm, I'm going to miss out on anything if i stop reading this yeah uh, i think yeah i think if you know if something happened and i could never get a another one of these uh, i would be okay and and i don't feel like that with some of the other uh, dc titles so, you know that i don't want to miss them 
And I, and I, I don't really care if I miss this. It, it's okay. It's a nice little Elseworlds type tale and not branded, but it, you know, in that category. Right. Um, and, and I, it's just okay. It's just okay so far. That's kind of where I came down. It's it's not a bad start, but it's also clearly not a must read comic. At least not yet. Maybe it'll become that. I kind of doubt it. Um, it doesn't look like this is going to be quite the success story that uh, Injustice Gods Among Us has turned out to have been. With it still going on in in you know uh, it's what sixth or seventh miniseries or whatever. And and it seems to be outpacing the game as far as far as production i don't know if there's an injustice 3 in the works or or whatever but um it it seems to be more prolific than the game whereas this is probably going to be a a short series and and over with i would guess that's kind of my sense too yeah and again it's it's not bad if if you like the video game you may love this um if you're into batman there's obviously tons of other stuff to be reading that frankly i think is a little bit better than that than this is and in the main continuity um now this doesn't really fall into your all in dc proper reading list um so you this is a decision point for you isn't it it depends how many issues this lasts because i've obviously got a couple on order pre-order over at cowabunga um but yeah this is one that uh, is not guaranteed to stay on the list but it was not so horrible that i feel the need to immediately pull it um, I may give it another uh, uh, pre-order or two just to get a sense of how long it's going to last. I mean, if it's based on between two seasons that each one five episodes, now granted, I don't know how long one of these episodes is, um, I, I can't imagine this is going to last more than five, six issues of comics, but I, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, you're probably right. So, well, yeah, why, why bail at this point if it's if it's going to be short lived? Exactly, exactly. If I've already pre-ordered like you know most of it, why not just ride it through and see what happens? But if it was one that, hey, it's it's issue, you know, we're at the beginning and it's going to go twenty issues. It's like, yeah, I'd probably pull the plug on it. Um, not because it's bad, but just because my reading list is kind of crowded right now. Yeah, I mean, does this this isn't. A, is this as good to you as any other Bat book currently being published by DC? Not that I can think of. Yeah, I don't think. Uh, yeah, I was trying to think. You know, what am I kind of enjoying the least of all of all the the Batman books that are out there? And and, and I, yeah, it, it's probably this. It's probably this. So, although there, it's not bad, there there are there are better Batman stories being told. Even and, Detective, I think, is better than this. Oh yeah, definitely. I think. Um, Regardless, at the end of this story, it ends. If you want more, it's pretty much go to the video game or maybe they'll do a follow-on miniseries. But this narrative universe has a finite lifespan. So it's not like you're picking up any tidbits here that'll play into a future Batman or detective story, you know, down the line. But that's that's just how my mind thinks. Maybe that's not a factor for most people. Um, I hope this is successful in getting people from the game potentially into comics. But if you're already reading the comics... Uh, I don't know that there's much here for you unless you're really wanting a Batman story free of the confines of continuity of the comics, but maybe tied into the continuity of of a video game. Yeah, you can't get completely away from it. No, no. Uh, For me, I'm going to go with a C plus. I thought about a B minus, but this is just it's again, it's not bad. It's it's fine for what it is, but I don't see it having any staying power or any particular reason to recommend it to somebody who may not already be aware of it yep that's right where i am as well i'm going to give it a c plus um you know if read read the rest of the the bat books that are out there um before you get to this one i think uh you don't have to run run to the store to pick this one up yeah shall we move on to our marvel book yes this is infinity countdown prime this is the I guess the lead-in to uh, Infinity Countdown itself, which starts in two weeks, um, which actually I'll be reviewing with uh, the new new co-host after you step down. I figured new co-host, hey, we'll, we'll revisit it. Plus, there you go. Didn't look like a, a lot of other choices that week for Marvel. This is thirty pages of all new story. It's like yeah, but it's it, it felt like a lot of kind of vignettes setting up the. Um, the status quo of where are these infinity stones what are these infinity stones who has them and what's the the lay of the land going into the event and you th- yeah the the stones you thought you knew you might not know they're a little different than the, than you may have realized yeah well 
one of the things I did when I, I started is I looked at this cover. It's like, oh, we've got, you know, hands with stones. Let me see if I can guess the hands. And I got, I think, half of them. Actually, no, I'm not even sure I got half of them. I think I got two of them. And one or two of the others were pretty obscure, so I, I, I don't feel bad about not having gotten. And there were one or two characters they had in here that I'm like, really? They, they chose to add that character? I mean, we knew we were going to get Wolverine in this because of, of when we had seen him before in uh, Marvel Legacy, I guess it was. They pull in uh, Turk out of the, uh, the Daredevil uh, Defenders kind of area. And I'm like, taking a street-level character that's, I think, obscure-ish to begin with, and tossing him into a, a cosmic-level event, that I really didn't see coming. Captain Marvel, they keep trying to make her like she's really relevant to the Marvel Universe. I'm not saying she's irrelevant, but I don't think she's as central as they're making her. So uh, I'd guess that hand, but, you know, it's like, I take it or leave it. And then, of course, the obvious one that I thought for sure I've got right of Ben Grimm, the thing, completely wrong. Totally different character. Another one I didn't see coming because that character's recently shown up elsewhere in a different kind of context. But again, we've got Infinity Stones floating about so they can they can play that issue. And then one or two of the others they brought in, I'm like, wow, I just... They, I don't know, it felt to me like if you're reading this and you're well-versed on the Marvel Universe, you'll recognize some of these characters that have been out of play for a little bit or just aren't used that often. But if you're not that deeply versed in it, you're going to be reading some of the saying, who is this and why should I care? How did this work for you? Because, I mean, I think you've got a decent knowledge of the Marvel Universe. Yeah, but I, I'm not, uh, uh, I, I didn't get it, do the Hickman stuff with his uh, big event that was Infinity tied in, right? And uh, and I missed uh, some of that, some of the, the, in, the Infinity Gauntlet stuff. I don't think I've read all of it either. So um, I... It, this this helped me. I mean, because it kind of gave reset the status quo and and let me know where we were and and that that the the stones had little different powers than what you remembered. And mm -hmm. so there was tons of exposition in here, but I think it was probably necessary um, just to kind of get everybody on the same page. So when you go into this long, long, long event, that you know you you're not confused along the way. Um, but yeah, it was, it was an awful lot. It was a, it was kind of an information dump. I thought, um, I really liked, I really liked the Wolverine, uh, intro. I thought that him, him and Loki back and forth was great. Um, but then it, it, it that was kind of the peak for me. And then I, uh, as it went along, I thought, Hmm, I don't know if I want to participate in this, if it's going to be a long drawn out event. And then as I got to the checklist, I was Sure, I didn't want to participate in all those, all those one shots and and things that were going to happen. So uh, I'm I'm not sure if I'll be reading all this. It just seems like an awful lot and over a long protract protracted amount of time that uh, I I don't know if it's must must reading for me. You say long and protracted, but we've got a five issue limited series coming out monthly with what nine one shots uh yet to come not counting this one in the previous adam warlock yeah i know I, I, I guess i'm spoiled by the the weekly or the compressed events that happened recently i think dc did one and you know i think marvel did one too that was you know kind of in and out and you, you didn't have to wait and um th i guess i got a little spoiled i don't know if i want to go do any more of these especially since i've got a long time to wait for doomsday clock now to finish up and i've got a uh metal i got a little extra time to wait for for it to finish up so i just i don't know if i want to do it again i don't know if i get it back on the, the carousel and i get that i get that um i'm just thinking this is surprisingly contained for a marvel event you know it's again five issues versus the nine that leaps into about 20 or 12 or whatever uh with the additional epilogues and issues they cram in there and again there's no um frontline series or other you know five or six miniseries yeah we've got like the dark hawk and the champions or whatever and a few one shots but nine additional issues compared to again the 50 or 60 we sometimes literally get uh i'm not saying it's tiny i'm not trying to talk you into staying with it it's just the way you were talking about long drawn out etc 
it, it may be more than you want, and I totally get that. It's not as bad as many other Marvel events have been. Yeah, I guess in comparison to something that that be, that balloons to a ten or twelve month event, then yes, the, yeah. this is this is only six. So I think it's on par with Dark Knight Metal if you count the two preludes, the seven mm-hmm. one shots they had. Yes, uh, yes. So I, I I think faster speed makes sense. I agree with you on that. This is going to tie into a lot of different characters, a lot of different things. When does the when does the Infinity War come out in the theaters? Is it May? So it's right in the middle of this? That's a great question. I do not know. I think it's a Memorial Day release, or somewhere around there, I think. I haven't uh, haven't kept track of that. Um, maybe that'll be good timing for this. Maybe it won't. I don't know. If you're curious about this, I do recommend considering picking this issue up, because it had a pretty good thing at the back on the Saga of the Infinity Stones, and it's a pretty good primer, and I think that is... Yeah, yeah, there was a lot of information there, and it really took you through the whole, the whole history of it. Really. Yeah, I appreciated that. I hadn't realized quite how far back some of the history went. Uh, I haven't read a lot of the early, early, early stuff, uh, but I was around for the Infinity Gauntlet and uh, Quest and War and all those other things. But it gave both. Here's what the new Infinity Stones are. Here's what they originally were. The colors have changed. Yada yada. So I thought all of that was good, but I think they almost might have been better off doing that as a free 16-page book or something um, versus yeah. this yeah. is a, a 4.99 comic. Yeah, I, I think because I think really this is a this if you're if you're all into this series and you want to do this event and and be up to date with what's happening, you're go- you really should read this. You have to read this because of all the information and the fact that. These stones have changed since what you what you understand of them. Um, so yeah, that's I think you're right. It, it is kind of important for that. Wouldn't that have been Wouldn't that have been a fun um, giveaway though? Yeah, and exactly. If they had taken basically the back matter, everything but the the comic story itself, and just said, "Here's a teaser." Particularly if they had done that maybe in the uh, the Marvel previews when they were soliciting this stuff. I don't know. It's it's something they should think about next time. And let's face it, there will be a next time. Maybe not for the Infinity Stones, but for something. <laughs> uh, I felt, by and large, the story itself was more of a teaser than the actual start of the story, but that's not too surprising. That's why it's the Countdown Prime and not Countdown Number 1. But we already had the Countdown Adam Warlock, which I think had originally been solicited as Guardians of the Galaxy Number 151, but I could be wrong on that. This is one that I'm, I'm kind of, sort of, mildly curious about what's going on, but I don't feel, oh my god, I'm just... So amped up for this, not by a long shot. Uh, But that's because I've also been around the block with the Infinity Gems a few times in the Marvel Universe. It can be a fun story, but I'm not seeing here the level of story that like Jim Starlin has done in the past or or things like that. I think they're going back to a well that uh, has been mined pretty severely and pretty well in the past. So there's a high bar to get up to that they, they haven't quite gotten. Yeah. Yeah, I, and, and I, I think the art's fine in this. I think um, you know it, this. You know, to know what's going on, uh, you, you're probably going to want to read this, especially if you're in for this entire thing. Um, I, I'm, I'm curious if you could just pop in on the the countdowns and um, stay away from all the little in, individual side quest books. Sometimes they allow you to do that, and sometimes you miss out. I don't know. Um, that that'd be curious if we instead of. What did we determine? Uh, 12, 15 books. It's only five or so. So So essentially, how essential are those those Captain Marvel, Daredevil, Darkhawk, Black Widow, Champion offshoots is the question. Yeah. Yeah. That's a fair that, question. That, um, you know, I don't think I did not read the Adam Warlock. So um, was it chock full of information? Not really. Yeah. It basically explained how he got to, out from where we saw him because we reviewed the Guardians of the Galaxy 150, right? Yes. How he got from there to here. Okay. And uh, did you feel like you were missing out on that story not having read it? No, no. Kind of I, I, did, I did feel at a little bit of a lot. I felt like, well, I bet you, you know, long time uh, Marvel fans who have read all of this stuff would get a little more out of this book than I would because um, I don't seem to have the, the vast knowledge of it. Uh, but they also held my hand enough to give me all the information. I just, uh, I mean, I don't know if my enjoyment level was where it should be because 
I wasn't seeing things that I was I was very fond of and and knew inside and out. Mm -hmm. So um, that probably hurt me a little bit as well. Yeah, it was. It's another one of those, uh, unfortunately, that fall into the well. It's fine. There's there's really nothing wrong with it. I just don't know if it's something that I need to read. I can understand that and. This is one of those things where it did not really sell me and, and get me excited for the event, if it's really even an event, because it's like, I'm not sure how many other titles are, are going to connect to this. Um, maybe they will, maybe they won't. I don't know, and it may just be like a Annihilation where it's happening more in the Cosmic Space section or something. But I don't know. I'm going to go with a, a B- minus on this. I thought the art was, was good. Diodato uh, rarely disappoints, and he certainly didn't do that here. The story could have had a clearer through line, and it really should have gotten me more excited for the event than it did, is, is really what it comes down to. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm in lockstep with you so far. I'm going to go with the B- minus as well. It was it was um, better than, than the Batman book, for sure. And, you know, cost a little more, but had a lot more meat on the bone. And uh, I think for folks that uh, that want to be a part of this, is there's a really a lot of good information here and, and something that, that you might want to read. Um, so it's not something I would tell people to shy away from. I just don't know if it's, if it's my cup of tea. It's funny because I would recommend it more for the back matter than the main story. <laughs> exactly. And that's, that's not a good thing to say about a comic. And again, the story is not bad. It, it was fine, but I really think, uh, 499 for this, man, that's even with the extra pages. That's, that's a little rough. Shall we move on to our other book? Yeah. Now, this is The Further Adventures of Nick Wilson, number two from Image. Um, I did not pre-order this. I've uh, read the, the press PDFs of the, uh, the first and second issue. And I've got... Uh, this is another one I've got really mixed feelings on. Um, it was one that I, I didn't pick up uh, during the solicit cycle. Um, I felt the first issue was a little bit of a slow start, kind of setting up the main character who's... This Nick Wilson's like a celebrity superhero. He's lost his powers. I guess he was the only superhero in this world. And I'm like, that's not a bad premise. But, you know, I, I did see Hancock when it came out years ago, and it was not that radically different. Not exactly the same either. This issue continues the story forward, focusing a bit more on Nick's arch enemy, off, who's offering him a job. They're, they're going to open up a museum around the Nick Wilson experience. i okay, that's, that's kind of interesting. And I'm enjoying the story. But it feels kind of leisurely paced. Yeah. And I really don't know where this is going. I haven't decided if I'm going to stick around for it or not. I, there's only another three issues. But with this, it's like I haven't invested anything, so I could easily walk away if I wanted to. I just, if I if if I keep going with it, it it's going to be just out of curiosity. And if I was, if I had less stuff in my, my to read stack, which I still have quite a bit, this might have gotten onto it. And it still might. I just, I don't know. The art's good. The story's fine. But I just kept struggling with where is this going? And it's like things were happening to and around Nick. Yeah. But he wasn't really acting as the protagonist of the story. He wasn't making decisions. He wasn't, I mean, obviously he's critical to the story. It'd be like doing a, uh, a biopic on Elvis without Elvis involved it, or, or mentioned. You can't do that. But you could tell a lot of stories around, say, the history of Elvis the colonel or, or whatever the impact he had on music whatever without really focusing on on what elvis who he was who he did type thing and we're somewhere in between those two extremes here nick's doing stuff but it felt like all the decisions he was making he just kind of sort of fell into he didn't really have anything better going on so i kind of yeah. liked it but was kind of not sold by it yeah I, I i liked it but i don't know if i'm liking it for the right reasons okay um, I, I i i like I like this character and kind of the standout of that first issue I thought was the kind of relationship with uh, the old, the old girlfriend from high school. I really liked that and was curious about where that, that was going to go. And then, then this, the standout of this issue for me was the exchange in the bar with uh, Coco, I think her name was. Um, and, 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 and that, you know, some of the other stuff was, you know, it was interesting, but, I, I'm think I'm picking up on these these relationship angles in here, and I don't know why they're standing out. I really enjoy the 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 music uh, influences that the the writer has, and he goes into it in in depth in the back matter, which I thought I found really fascinating with some of the or, original blues guys and um, 
kind of their story and how that influenced him. I, I it doesn't it doesn't really play out that much on the page. Um, you know, there's a there's a conversation about it a little bit, but for the most part, it's just kind of like a a little essay that he throws in the back. But I really I found that fascinating. I I, I don't know that I think Nick is the greatest guy in the world. He's He's okay. He doesn't seem to deserve the derision that he's getting, but he also doesn't seem to take things into his own hands either and try to um, make you really like him uh, and, and love him. Mm-hmm. Uh, so th- that that I found kind of strange, but but I I, I find myself fascinated by this book and uh, something that I I look forward to reading, at least in the first two, and so that's something. Um, and yeah, but for me to glom on to these kind of relationship angles within this this uh, superhero-ish type book and to kind of really get the most enjoyment out of the back matter, that's probably not the way you, you're supposed to enjoy a book. <laughs> but but for me, it's really, really kind of elevated it to that next level and, and made me really appreciate it and, and really appreciate the, the medium of the, the single issue comic because the there's a there's something here for me um, beyond you know waiting for a trade and I and I felt like although we didn't move a long way I still felt this was a really enjoyable issue experience and I kind of value those more and more because it's they're they're fewer and farther between you know when what we're getting most of the times is is chapters and and sometimes even bits of chapters in a, in a single issue. I I felt like I I really got a solid comic issue here, and I I appreciate that. And um, these are not easy to define reasons to read a book. You know, mm-hmm. I can't I can't say it's a great it's a great character who you know, really root for. I mean, you kind of do. Um, you don't want him to fail, but that's not what attracts me to this book. And and although I'm really enjoying it a lot. Uh, I don't know that it would be for everyone, and I don't know that everyone would enjoy it to the level I do because I have I, I, I'm enjoying it for the weirdest of reasons, and uh, that's okay for me. But it might not it might not work for a lot of other people. Well, it's funny because the the back matter talking about the music and stuff. Uh, obviously, there are parallels to like phonogram and such. Yeah, the difference with phonogram is I'm not much of a music buff. I mean, I obviously listen to music and stuff, but I found that back matter in the phonogram uh, miniseries stuff to be more interesting than, I mean, this I just glanced at, skimmed a little, and it's like, yeah, this isn't for me, for the, the back matter. So to me, that added absolutely nothing. Yeah. And I could see where it was, you know, tangentially related to the story, but with phonogram, it was so much more integral. Yeah. And your point about the, uh, the conversation with Coco and stuff, I thought that Seen in the bar, and there are a couple others we could easily point to, uh, both in this issue and the previous. Great conversation type stuff, very good character moments, and almost cinematic in some respects, in terms of the, the quiet moments in the movie or whatever. Yeah. But it was uh, it was like we were hanging around with Nick Wilson, just kind of stalking him during the day or whatever, just to kind of see what happened. And there wasn't any, it's not like he had, again, any game plan, any agenda, any proactiveness or even somebody you follow around and they're just constantly reacting to stuff it's just things happen near him yeah he goes to a bar he talks to somebody yeah it had a little bit of box office poison to me and it kind of had some of those elements of a of an indie comic and um slice of life type stuff which um Historically, I like a lot better than you. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I would, if that's safe to say, that, that I think is, I enjoy those a lot more than you do normally. I'm okay with the slice of life sort of stuff if I know that's kind of clearly what I'm going in for. That wasn't really what I got the sense here. They're trying to to use the superhero genre to to lure us in for kind of an, an indie slice of life thing. Yeah. Imagine <laughs> if if this guy had not been a superhero but had been a rock star fallen from grace. Yeah. I would have I, I think it would be the exact same comic. <laughs> Absolutely. Instead of his arch enemy, it's his music rival. It, it's, you're right. It could be. It, he does not have to be a super. At least so far, two issues in, and there's only three left. Um, he does not have to have been a superhero because that doesn't play a big role. Yeah. But and, that doesn't mean I didn't enjoy it. I mean, I I still did, but I could definitely see where you would think one thing and and 
and say, well, where's the where's the superheroing stuff happening? And yeah, it does it doesn't. Even the fall from grace years later type aspect. There's no aspect of getting the band back together, trying to rehabilitate his reputation, or again no. anything that Nick is setting out to do. Yeah, he doesn't seem interested in a lot. Just get getting by is I, basically I, what what he's doing. I, I have a hard time rooting for him yeah. because I don't know what to root for him for or to do or, or you know what I mean. That's true. He hasn't told us what he wants to what what would be a successful arc for him. <laughs> and it's a good read. I mean, the art could be a little better here and there. Yeah. The The character moments are there. It The, the art tells the story very well. Um, I think there's a lot of potential here. And I think this is the kind of... of uh, if I were to do, like, a writing team for, like, an X-Men or, or, you know, a team book or whatever, having this uh, group of creators involved for the, hey, we're, we've got a little bit of time as the X-Men are flying off to, to go do whatever... Or the Avengers are in the Quinjet or they're at their mansion. Let's have just a moment where these two characters interact and we get to know them a little better, whatever. This team is doing a great job for that. Yeah, but there's you're... definitely some playful back and forth and it feels authentic. And, mm-hmm. and, and um, you know, that's that doesn't you don't get that a lot. You know, it, it's it's fun when that happens and it works. Um, and it, yeah, I, but I can definitely see I can definitely see the appeal there and or. Also, the fact that it might be missing something because based on what you think this book should be. I didn't get a sense of plot, trajectory, or where it's going, and we're two-fifths of the way through. Yeah, yeah. So that, that frustrated me a bit. And again, this is one where I haven't made up my mind on it. If I were looking for things to read, I would probably definitely have added this. My pull list is full enough that it's not at that point where it's, oh yeah, definitely, I'm curious what where the hell they're going with this. I'm mildly curious, but I've also got, again, a, a bunch of stuff stacked up. So... Yeah, and I don't know if this is uh, a story arc, and this is going to be a series of mini series that we're seeing uh, that's a lot more prevalent now, you know, kind of like the Resident Al- Alien model. Um, or this is something that... This is the totality of the story he wants to tell about this character, Nick Wilson. I don't know that we know that yet. I mean, it was originally solicited as issue one of an ongoing which happens all the time and then the next issue is of course two of five and you think oh okay either sales weren't where they wanted it to be or um they just didn't want the the stink of the miniseries unless i'm not remembering that right but i'm pretty sure it was not solicited as one of five i don't have the original solicit in front of me so i'm not sure um i was i know with the second one it was clear to be of five yes. i don't know about yes. the first yeah, well, but, it happens so much in Image. That's yeah. just kind of that's kind of their business practice now. It seems that uh, it's rare when when a, a, the first issue gets solicited as one of a finite number. And it it'd be nice if they would tell us that up front. Um, I think there's definitely an audience for this. Uh, I think people again who who might get more out of the back matter with the the music and stuff like that might like it. I don't dislike it. I don't love it. It didn't sell me on it. It had two issues too, so it's not like I haven't given it a chance. Um, at this point, there's a decent possibility I may just grab the press copies of the next three, and if I like it, either pick them up as back issues or get the trade or something. But I don't feel so compelled that I need to go spend the the three ninety nine an issue for this. Um, but again, like you said, it's more that slice of life sort of thing than I tend to be into. People who are more into that. They may want to check this out. Yeah, yeah, especially if you know, know that going in, um, uh, that that that's what it's going to be. And uh, uh, it, it, yeah, I don't think the original solicit kind of did it justice because I wasn't even going to read this originally because I thought it was going to be a twist on the superhero genre, and I'm kind of tired of those explorations. Mm-hmm. And and so um, I was really really surprised which how well that first issue worked for me um and the second issue continues to work for me really well um but maybe in a fashion that wouldn't work for everyone else um but you know for me i i really love this um i really i really love what they're doing i love the package uh the the single issue package um i tend to reward a single issue positive experience over you know, chapter one of a 
of a seven issue thing. If, if I, mm-hmm. I don't, if I just don't feel like I'm getting anything and I feel like I'm getting plenty here, um, for the money. And so I tend to reward that and, um, might overgrade a little bit, but, uh, I'm going to give it an A. Um, and, uh, it's something I would recommend others read. I think it's really well written and the art is strong enough that it won't distract. Um, and, um, I kind of wanted my final grade to be an A anyway, so oh. <laughs> that helps as well. We, we so. could have come out with just about anything, and it would have done well. Is what you're saying? <laughs> almost, almost. Probably. Maybe, maybe, maybe we should have stopped last week uh, with, with the A plus. Yeah, with, with the A plus on non invincible. I'm gonna yeah. go with a, a C plus on this. I mean, I get where you're coming from, but I I found it just directionless enough of a, a lead character and kind of a story. Mm-hmm. That I felt we were just kind of kind of going with the flow, and there's nothing wrong with that. It's just it's not enough to 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 really make me think, "Wow, uh, this is amazing," or, or something like that. Oh, I can't argue with that. I I could definitely see that take as well. Um, yeah, and it's just, that's the great thing about comics. There's so many Absolutely. different directions you can go, and um and we've uh, sure explored a lot of them over the years. Yeah, well, and not every comic is for everybody, and that's how it should be because it'd be kind of kind of boring and, and homogenous if it was that way out of the because again 250 episodes are there any titles that are particular highlights to you that uh you wouldn't have gotten on if, if we hadn't done this or that that really it's just wow this is something that everybody should be reading i, I think the big standout for me is tom zoller yeah uh, tom zoller was not on my radar um he uh, publishes at IDW, which I don't read much of. Um, and it never looked like it was something that, that would work for me. So the introduction of Tom Zoller to me and the fact that I just fell in love with everything that we read of his mm-hmm. and, and now I'm, you know, working my way through love and capes and going back and talking to him at cons. Um, that has been, uh, one of this, the biggest standouts, uh, it was being introduced to something that I would have never even given a second glance to, you know, he's, he's one, there, there are tons, tons of others. Um, uh, you know, we, some, some, uh, some dynamite books that I, I probably wouldn't have given a second thought to that have, that have been really strong. Um, some licensed properties that I l- always used to look my nose down upon. And I found some really great stories in that mm-hmm. kind of, subsection of comics and have looked at those with fresh eyes again. Um, it, it, it's just, it's really helped me to, um, expand what I like and not be stuck in, uh, you know, well, I know exactly what I like and, um, nobody can tell me any differently. Well, there's plenty of stuff that I like outside of my comfort zone. And then that becomes my comfort zone. Um, because I like it so much. And so it's, there's never going to be enough hours in the day for me to read all the great comic books that are out there. So I'm going to keep looking for them. And, um, I'm, I look forward to listening to you guys review some of those hidden gems and helping me find them. And, um, uh, I, I just, I, I've been overwhelmed this week with just the, the kind words from people, you know, Cool. You know, and it's it's been a really it's been really nice to hear that folks have enjoyed my take on things, and uh, my contributions, however small, to the podcast it has been well received, and um, it, it's been really nice to hear. And I, I'm I am going to miss the weekly conversation, mm-hmm. but I I am so looking forward to uh, being a listener. I just can't, I can't listen to myself talk because, because, <laughs> you know, so it's going to be great for me to be able to listen uh, to you guys talk about comics again. And uh, that, that's going to be a lot of fun for me. And uh, yeah, yeah, thanks again to you for, for giving me the shot and for stick, sticking with me for 250 episodes. And uh, I've had, I've just had a blast. Well, thanks for doing it because. I mean, the, the format of a Marvel or a DC Marvel and another book, I mean, it sounds pretty simple, but there are some weeks it's been hard to figure out, well, really, is there a decent 
DC or Marvel book that's not in the middle of a story or ending or, you know, we just talked about or something like that. Uh, with the the indie books, there have been a lot of them that I just, uh, I haven't been reading, I'm not that knowledgeable about. So you've certainly opened my eyes to a number of things uh, in that area. But your willingness to, to just explore and, and come in with an open mind on a lot of this stuff, uh, I definitely uh, appreciate that and value that. And there have been times we've We've both stumbled across some stuff that we thought was wonderful. A few other times we had very different opinions, one of us much higher and much lower than the other. And that's great because, like you said, there's so much stuff out there and everybody's tastes are particular to them. And there's nothing right or wrong about what any person likes or dislikes about comics. And the discussions we've had, I think, have been very fun and even when we've disagreed, we've still been able to be respectful to the creators who spent time trying to do the best job they could. Yeah, definitely. You know, and there have been a couple of times I think we've both felt, well, this was clearly not, I'm not part of that target audience. They're going for something else, but ah, we'll try it, whatever. And some of those have been a lot of fun. Some of them, like when we did, what was it, uh, Fairy Tales for uh, for episode 500. <laughs> yeah. I think we both came into that one not knowing what was going on, and I think I at least left still not knowing what was going on. I know, right there with you, yeah. <laughs> but having the the depth of, of what we've uh, reviewed over the last 250 issues has been a lot of fun for me. Uh, I appreciate all you've done for uh, the podcast and stuff, and you know I'm, I'm looking forward to, uh, again, your clips every month on the, the preview spotlight and whatnot, but it's also going to be fun getting a new co-host in and uh, revisiting some titles we've done, looking at some new ones, and just getting a new voice on to just get a different take on stuff. Yeah, it'll be, it'll be awesome. And uh, I'll be around. I'll be on the forum and the Slack and previews. And uh, my own podcast will still be continuing. So you cool. can always check out check out that if you want. And uh, um, But again, um, thanks a lot. And I'll see you guys uh, on the forums, I guess. Bye-bye.